theoretically. Peace can exist between a peaceful country and another peaceful country. Let's say, after the Second World War, apparently Germany became more peaceful. Now it can make peace with peaceful states like France, like Poland, and everybody remembers the history of Europe, okay? Since Germany decided that wars are too dangerous and too devastating, for Germans especially, they decided to change the disc in their head and the system which they use and to be more peaceful. And this is the time where they can make peace with France, Belgium, and Poland, if not with, with other countries. Okay, this is why Europe today is a flourishing, to extent, a, a, a continent almost like the United States of America. Okay. Peace cannot exist between a peaceful country and another country which doesn't know what peace is, especially internally. In Arabic they say, Fakr de Shay la mean somebody who doesn't have something cannot give it to others. Okay? Since they do not know, not know what peace is, how can they give peace to Israel? The problem is, I would say, psychologic in the Arab world. Since they fight each other non-stop, and you can see that in Iraq, in Syria, Iraq was given democracy on a silver platter by this nation who poured the, the blood of 4,000 soldiers and trillion dollars. What did they do with this gift given to them by the Americans? Now they kill each other on tribal disputes and religious disputes and sectarian disputes and ethnic disputes. Whatever dispute occurs in the Middle East occurs in Iraq. Okay? So how can Iraq live in peace with others when the Iraqis, or what so-called Iraqis, have no peace between themselves? Somebody who doesn't have anything or something cannot give it to others. The same thing with the Syrians. You know, just imagine that Israel had peace with Syria and gave them and gave them the Golan Heights. Now we would have those jihadists, those Al Qaeda activists, Jabhat al Nusra, on the Golan, shooting at Tiberias, shooting at Rosh Pina, shooting at uh, Kiryat Shmone, and all these Jewish uh, 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 kibbutzim and all these farms were under the Golan. Thank goodness that uh, Israel didn't listen to all those prophets who prophesied that peace will come to the Middle East if you only sign a, a, a peace agreement with Assad when he's still powerful. What would it be when he's not powerful? Will those Al-Qaeda activists uh, 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 recognize this peace? Will continue to live with, with peace with Israel? Forget about it. Okay? So thank goodness we don't have peace with Assad. Assad didn't have peace even for one day with his opponents inside Syria and read Pipe's books, Understanding Syria. This is the name? Okay. I, I use this book in my PhD on Syria. Okay, so, so, so definitely, that when those states or those societies, when they do not want, know what peace is, how can they live in peace with other countries like Israel? And this is the problem. Israel would gladly join peace in the Middle East. Okay, let's first see peace between the Arabs and themselves. And when they prove to all the others that they know what peace is, Israel will be the first to join it. But to fall into this swamp of blood and tears and fire, which the Arab world is, only an insane, somebody would even try to do this. Thank you. Thank you.